Now, we're in for another treat. Okay, so this gentleman I'm going to introduce to you next, his name is Mr. Paul Kuhn. He's an electrical engineer. He also has a law degree with a special interest in human rights. He was an instrumental founder for a, mem for a political party called Free Australia Party. He considers himself anti-Islam. Paul is married with four daughters. And you can guess why he's very patriotic then. Please welcome the highly educated Mr. Paul Kuhn. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. I'm going to do a little bit different than everybody else, and I'm not going to yell too much and all the rest of it. But one thing I want to do today is to give everybody here the opportunity to learn something. Learn something that you're not necessarily familiar with. The problem is that the people from Adelaide have heard this several times from me already, so I apologise to the Adelaide people. I'm going to start. Does anybody know what the UDHR of 1948 is? The Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I have a copy here. It was created in 1948, hence why it's title. And it was made up by the very same lawyers that tried the Nazis in the war crimes. Whilst they were waiting for the evidence to be gathered, they drew this document up of human rights, specifically so that things like the Holocaust never happen again. Uh, you can see where I'm going with this by now. I'm going to read you a couple of articles out of the UDHR. And the reason why I'm going to read them word for word off a piece of paper is so that I am not misquoted, as the media has been prone to do to things in the past. Yeah. Some of us have already mentioned this, that how shocking the media portray things. Yeah. I'm not going to read them one after that. I'm not going to read the whole 30 articles. But the beauty of it is, it is on the UN uh, website. Look up the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and you will find it. And it's written in plain English. And it was written in plain English so that it average people who don't have an education can understand it, it is unequivocal and it means what it says. Let me read you one. Article 3 says, everyone has the right to life, liberty and security of person. Hmm, interesting. I'll come back to these things in a minute. Number, uh, Article 6 for instance, I love this one myself, everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. Now, we had John Bolton up before and he did a wonderful speech and he talked about criminal law and, and other things about law. But everybody here who is anti-Islam or is sitting on the fence, perhaps, must understand by now that people are not equal before the law under Islam. People do not have the right to life, liberty and security of person. You know exactly what I'm saying. That's why this document is so important. The problem is, in Australia, it has not been ratified under domestic law, which means it is not part of our system. Even though two Australian lawyers contributed to this in the Nuremberg trials, we haven't put it into practice in Australia. We are the only Western country that does not have a Bill of Rights. Pretty amazing. To counter the UDHR, and I love the article as I said because it's so simple, it's very plain and it's very clear. To counter that, Islam through the CIAR or whoever that, oh, Organisation of Islamic Cooperation they call themselves, created this piece of rubbish called the Cairo Declaration of Human Rights. Rubbish. And not only is it rubbish, it only applies if you are a Muslim. <laughs> well. So that's their answer to Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Oh, no, 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 we're the racists, remember? That's why I'm married to a Chinese girl. That's why I have half babies. Because I'm a racist and a bigot, and I'm proud of it if that's what it takes. So I wanted to draw your attention to this particular document, the UDHR 1948. Let me read a little bit from Wikipedia. Don't we love Wiki? It gives you so much information, but check the references. One of the things about the, the um, UDHR 1948, it was signed, in other words, agreed to by every country presiding at the trial of the Germans. However, I'll read this because I think this is better than I could put it. However, in 1948, Saudi Arabia abstained from the ratification vote on the declaration, get this bit, claiming that it violated Sharia law. You know, this 
is the whole argument that I have against Islam or anything to do with it, not only in this country, but everywhere, because it does not support the most basic of human rights. Now, we've heard all the crimes that they commit against children and then pedophilia and all the rest of it, but that spells it out in black and white people. Learn this, find out what it is, and it's easy to understand, as I said. And Saudi Barbaria, understand that Saudi Barbaria is the, uh, has the king in charge of Saudi Arabia and they make the rules on Islam. They are the final say in anything Islamic and they would not agree or concur with it because it violates, it violates Sharia law. How can you violate something? Ah, that's because it's the exact opposite of what we believe in, what our value system is, what we believe in. And that is what is important, that we hang on to those things and we must do at any cost. I'm going to um, go a little bit off topic here because our dear unelected Prime Minister Malcolm Turncoat recently said, and I'm going to quote off the top of my head so I may misquote, and he said that he cannot guarantee the safety and security of Australian citizens anymore. Well, why is that? Why, why would that be, that he can't guarantee? Well, I guess they never really could. But what he was referring to was Islam. Now, I actually have come up with a solution to his, his little quandary that he can't offer that protection, and it's very, very simple. It's going to save the government money. It's going to provide the security that we want. And it's going to restore our, our social welfare system and anything else that we have going for us. And it is very simple. Ban Islam. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul Coon. I had a long conversation with Paul the other night, so he's fascinating to listen to and some new ideas I hadn't actually heard before. So please, you might want to grab him and, and, and uh, have a conversation. But Paul just forgot to say something, Paul Coon, and he's going to come on very briefly just to tell you something that could make or break this election. So please, let me get, get it back on stage. Thank you. Sorry about that. I, I sort of didn't forget, but I'll be about 60 seconds, promise. People ask me, what can I do? You know, I'm a little bit meek and mild. I don't like to get to rallies like this. Well, here's what I would suggest you do. I ran a, a, a led a political party for seven years and I got this all the time and I had to come up with some solutions. Here it is. If you are a relatively quiet person and you don't want to be seen to be public or whatever, fine. Click on the like button of people who are outspoken. Show them they have support. Okay. People like Kim, people like your candidates around here and Daniel. Show them that you support them. Educate other people, your friends, your family, other people to do the same thing. And that's just clicking a like. If you can do more than that, start becoming involved with the political structure because the only way this is going to change is with these bastards at the back here. Yes. You have to make it politically expedient for them to start doing the will of the people. Now, here's my suggestion when people ask me, who do I vote for? And I say, now very carefully, put the sitting member last. Whoa, have a think about that. That's going to have such an impact because at the very least, that will guarantee a change of major government every election. And that's all you have to do is put the current sitting member last. And it doesn't matter whether he's Labor, Liberal or Greens. Whoever it is, put him last. Now, unfortunately, there are always caveats to these things. So, in that case, if you get someone who is a sitting member like... Um, um, who's that girl? Oh, the, the, okay. Lambie. Lambie. She's wonderful. Support people like that. Give, the, give your support to these people. Turn up when they do things and give them that support. So that's what you can do. But at the end of the day, it's going to be in the ballot box, people. And that's the way to do it. Yeah. It only takes 5% and you will change government. Thanks. Thanks. I did it again, baby. Yeah!
Tune in tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye for now.